this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan Channel, my friends. The XRP party, oh, it's a just getting started with increasing indicators that we're in bull territory at this point. You know, outside of some sort of wildcard event, it really does look like what's most probable is we're, we're here. And it's not just crypto markets that are responding this way. Um, so I want to share with you the reason that we're seeing what we've been seeing today. In case you hadn't checked the prices, uh, Bitcoin popped up over... Uh, twenty four thousand uh, dollars. XRP moved up at the exact same time, as did pretty much every other crypto on the entire damn planet. So, what's what gives with the headline on the screen here? Because this is what we started the day with. This is from eight hours ago, roughly from Coin Telegraph. Why is the crypto market down today? Well, there are reasons, but uh, it's a little premature to even consider writing a headline quite like that because market certainly popped, which really although nobody technically knew for sure, shouldn't be surprising. But uh, I'll share with you the reasons why. Before getting f going further, though, I do want to be clear, I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, all right? I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. Well, it's certainly true and fair to state that there's a lot of uncertainty out there as an XRP holder, but... Personally, I think it's a very good time to be an XRP holder, and there's risk associated holding XRP or any cryptocurrency or any asset, frankly, even homes. We saw a, a, you know, a real estate collapse in, in, in 2008. So nothing's protected forever for sure, but uh, at least in terms of you know, XRP's usefulness and long-term viability in that regard, I have no doubt on, on, at, at this point in time. Uh, well, not, not based on anything that's publicly available information-wise in terms of actual adoption and utility. Um, I'm more concerned about what the SEC is doing there, but even so, and that may be one of the riskier reasons to hold XRP in the short term, I don't think for the long term, but in the short term, but even so, I'm absolutely willing to take that bet. Oh, happy to take that bet. I mean, I'm not happy that I've been put in this situation, but now that we're here, happy to take the bet, because I do believe that we are going to get clarity, and it's going to be in the coming months. It could be less than two months from now. In fact, you may recall that XRP community member and attorney James K. Filan uh, believes that what's most likely is we are going to see a, a ruling from Judge Torres regarding summary judgment by the end of September. It's now the 1st of February. Or, or, did I say September? I think my brain just broke if I said that. Uh, by, the, by the end of March. And uh, again, it's, it's February 1st here as I record this. So may, fine, maybe it goes past that. An attorney didn't think this possible. Could go a little bit longer than that. But either way, we're going to get the news soon. And I'm going to talk about this more in other videos, but suffice it to say, even if Ripple loses, I still think that that's going to be a massive win for XRP holders. The reason, not the, not the losing part, but because I, I'm optimistic that there is going to be clarity uh, for, for XRP holders, or for transactions in secondary markets. So we're at a time where that's going to happen, and it looks like there's just increasing evidence that we actually all are in bull territory. doesn't mean that we're going to see complete euphoria this year necessarily, like, you know, like we saw in 2021, but we're on the right path. The scariest times are over. And as I record this, XRP is at 40 cents, Bitcoin a hair below $24,000, but it did peak above that earlier today. And we'll get to why in a sec. Uh, market cap for the asset class, over 1.1 trillion. That's the highest I've seen it since, I couldn't even tell you, at some point last year, I guess. Probably towards the beginning part of the year, if I had to guess. Uh, Bitcoin dominance at 41.71%. And you got the Crypto Fear and Greed Index at 60 out of 100, indicating that the market is currently this very second in, in greed. Market participants, participants are feeling greedy. And so, of course, there's that saying uh, from Warren Buffett, and he was talking about the stock market, but it certainly applies here. Be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. But that doesn't mean that the moment greed is hit that we must now immediately flip-flop back to fear. Just like the moment uh, last year when we entered fear, it didn't mean that the market was suddenly going to become greedy again. No, no, no. F fear began, and then the market continued to tank. But along that way down, you know, that's the time to be accumulating. Just as on the flip side, when you start to see markets getting greedy, uh, at some point along the way up, it, can, it could make sense to start selling. And so that's unique to you. I'm not telling you to buy or sell or hold or do anything in particular. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just sharing with you in a general sense. That's how it works. And we are in this direction. You know, you, you can't stay in fear for, forever. And after seeing a, just a completely devastating year like 2022, it is not probable to see two years in a row like this. It's possible, but it's not probable. Uh, so what actually happened? Well, it's what I've been talking about in recent days. There was the, uh, the, the Fed meeting, FOMC, 
And um, what, what, what the market anticipated was going to happen is pretty much what happened. And it's what I've been talking about in recent days. So uh, the Fed, they did increase interest rates, but only by 25 basis points, which just means 0.25%. And there are a number of things along this path that have both scared, but then encouraged the market. So what spooked the market last year, and this is by design, of course, slowed down economic activity, just impacted speculators, is when the Fed at the beginning part of last year began increasing interest rates. Uh, that uh, resulted in negative price action for stocks and crypto because crypto moves in tandem with stocks. And uh, and then, so I think I think they start, I have to go back and double check. I think they started with a 25 basis points increase, then 50 basis points, and then I think there were several increases uh, that were each 75 basis points, just meaning, you know, 0.75% each for those increases. It's somewhere around there, even if I'm a little off, but you get the cut of my jib. But then, uh, you know, so there are a couple things. As as we saw, we got to that point where there's the first 75 basis points increase. People on the edge of their seats, okay, the next one, is it going to be even higher? Is it going to be Is it going to be 100 basis points? Is it going to be one whole percent? And it wasn't. And so market participants were the seller like, oh, maybe the Fed's done ramping this up. And then market participants were happy. What was the next thing that made market participants happy? Well, it came this past December. After several increases with 75 basis points increases in December, we saw that the increase was reduced to just 50 basis points. So again, that's an indication that we're going in the right direction. That makes market participants happy because if you're hammering a market, just a people just operating their daily lives and businesses in the economy, and they're, you know, the interest rates aren't going to be going up across the board as much, that's a positive sign. And it would leave one to expect, of course, quite reasonably so, that you'd have greater, uh, you know, greater activity with, you know, from an economic perspective. So seeing that it went down to 50 basis points, another positive thing, and, and obviously crypto markets responded. And, and then people are anticipating, so that's another positive. Well, what's going to happen next? Is it still going to be just a 50, is it going to be a 50 basis points increase or is it going to he keep heading back down? Well, we know as of today, it was announced. The Fed announced it's a 25 basis point increase, so continuing to go in the right direction. And yes, it's completely ridiculous that crypto markets are just hanging on the edge of their seats waiting to see what the Fed does. You know, because they've got these completely decentralized systems that, you know, no central authority can control or, or destroy. And still, in terms of the, the price action, the way that speculators are behaving in terms of their buying and selling, despite that, it's kind of funny to me that just looking at what the Fed says, okay. The Fed shouldn't be in a position where it causes that type of fear or greed in market participants. That's my personal opinion. Like the, the, the role that the Fed has, I don't, I, don't think it's, I don't think it should be, but that's a whole separate conversation. Suffice it to say, you know, it did head into the right direction. So what's the next thing? Well, once you get back to the point where there are no, any, are no additional hikes, so you get down to a point where uh, there is no increase, it's just zero. Well, I, I suspect, and most people do at this point, that once you get that, and maybe you get that after the next Fed meeting, maybe you do, I don't know. But, it, but once that happens, you're probably going to see a lot of nothing from the Fed waiting to see how the economy responds in labor markets. That's basically it. And then after that, if, if they find out that what they did didn't totally wreck the economy, then you can start to, to you know postulate that perhaps we're going to see a reduction in interest rates. But uh, that's a ways away, and I, and I wouldn't anticipate it. If that's going to happen uh, in, in the not-too-distant future, it still wouldn't be this year in all likelihood. So take a look at this headline from CNBC. The Federal Reserve raised rates. Chair Powell says it's premature to declare victory against inflation. Uh, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell made it clear during his press conference that the data the Fed is closely watching more than anything else is jobs data, said former Goldman Sachs Chief Operating Officer Gary Cohn. He did go back and forth, giving you both sides of the argument, said Cohn, a former economic advisor in the Trump administration. The only thing he kept hanging his hat on was the labor market. At this point, it feels like we are just labor dependent. So effectively, and you'll see as we go through with the perspective from additional individuals here, they're basically waiting to see because what they're going to do eventually, they're going to stop taking action and then they're going to see if they screwed stuff up severely. And then they'll have to adjust even further if they did create problems. That's pretty much it. Anyway, peace continues. Jerome Powell said that uh, he doesn't expect the Fed to cut, rate, cut rates this year as some major strategists project. Given our outlook, I don't see us cutting rates this year if our outlook comes true, the Fed chair said. Powell also said he was not concerned about the bond market implying one more cut before a pause because 
some market participants uh, are expecting inflation to fall faster than the Fed does. If we do see inflation coming down much more quickly, that will play into our policy uh, policy setting, of course, policy. So look, so maybe there is just going to be one more, maybe there's going to be one more hike, and then maybe it does go down this year. Whatever the timing ends up being, um, it's not the end of the world necessarily if, if you just see us move sideways in terms of Fed activity. I mean, historically, we've had times where there are much, much, much higher rates than what we're seeing even today, even after all of the increases. But mind you, you know, a year ago, we we're starting at, what, zero? So so even with all the increases, it's like, eh, it's not, it, although way worse than yesterday, for, you know, in terms of if you want to take out a loan for pretty much anything, it's still historically not exactly the end of the world. So as long as the Fed just stops meddling in stuff, and uh, if you can get inflation back under control, and, you know, ideally quit, quit printing the dollar into oblivion, then, then you can have a, a, a truly free market and just let participants do what they do in all aspects of that. So in, you know, under such a setting, what do you think is going to happen with crypto now that we're creeping out of bear territory? And this is why, again, I'm so optimistic. I know it's silly that we have to talk about this when we're talking about what will crypto prices be in the future? What will XRP be worth in the future? It's the government on all fronts. Think about it. You know, well, not literally all fronts, but you know, there's obviously the SEC stuff. And then on top of that, the Fed directing ultimately where the price of Bitcoin and XRP and every other crypto goes on a global scale, mind you. This is one country, the United States and the Fed, whatever they do, the world, the entire world responds completely ridiculous. And so before I'd done any research half a decade ago, having jumped into crypto, I never would have guessed that this would have been the case in terms of the biggest driving factor uh, for price uh, prices for crypto in particular on a global scale. If I, if you told me that half a decade ago and I jumped in and was just beginning to learn stuff, that would have blown my simple little moon, well, then moon Lambo mind. Should I get back to being moon Lambo again? At some point, it's got to happen, right? And we're, we're, we're entering bull territory, it looks like, right? Should I just do it? Uh, I should probably do a poll on Twitter or something like that. Um, anyway, <laughs> peace continues. The central bank is nearing the end of its rate hike campaign and was more dovish this meeting, according to Charlie Ripley, senior investment strategist for Lions Investment Management. A lack of clarity on future interest rate moves signals the Fed is nearing the end of its rate tightening cycle, Ripley said. After hikes end, he said the central bank will likely sit tight while the economic data catches up to the policy. The Fed is essentially speaking out of both sides of the mouth as they signaled further increases are appropriate, but also acknowledge that they will consider the cumulative amount of tightening in future policy decisions, he said. Ripley added that the slowing pace of current rate hikes to 25 basis points is a clear sign that the central bank is more confident that current economic policy is having its intended impacts of tightening. Taken all together, Ripley said the meeting tilted slightly dovish. There you go. And so they're waiting to see to what degree this is going to negatively impact particularly labor markets. And again, the reason, in case it's not clear, is because as you increase interest rates for anything, uh, individuals in their own lives, when it comes to taking out loans or businesses, uh, if you're going to take out loans and expand your business, the more costly it is to do it, the more you're going to uh, you know, decrease the motivation that individuals will have to take on increasing levels of risk. That's just how it works. And so you may think, well, even if it's just a point, okay, if you fine. But the number of people that are willing to take out a loan at 1% interest versus 5% interest or 10% interest, different people have different tolerances, different thresholds. So the more you increase these rates, the more you're going to get that. And then if businesses aren't expanding, if things are too costly, then the question is, what does it do to the labor market? And that's what we're sitting tight on. That's effectively it. And that's why your XRP price did what it did today. <laughs> it's so stupid. It is so stupid. And that's why I'm still wondering. I don't know if this will ever come to be. I kind of hope it does, though. Because there's this idea of, like, crypto being a hedge against inflation and tumultuous times, and it clearly is not behaving like that. There's no historical evidence. Now, some people may buy it because they think that makes sense. And, hey, fair enough, on an individual level. I'm just telling you, on the whole, that's not what people are doing. And it's so stupid. So I'm just wondering, in a more mature asset class, would it be the case that we are going to see that increasingly? Will we see uh, people... You know, uh, not responding to what the globally on a global scale, not responding in terms of price action to what the Fed is doing policy wise. That would be nice. That, that would be a nice step in the right direction. But right now, it's just like people, it, there's so many question marks for so many people around crypto. Perhaps that's why we're seeing the behavior that we're seeing. So if, if we don't see that upon a mature maturation of the asset class, 
fine, maybe stocks and crypto always move in tandem, but it just seems silly as hell when you're talking about assets that are not being controlled by any central authority and certainly not the Fed, and they're on a global scale, is what it is. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan. <laughs>